Hey there, I'm Lee Ullman here with some big news from the National Young Farmers Coalition. We're partnering with Heritage Radio Network on a special season of The Farm Report. It's all about what's happening with the Farm Bill and how it impacts farmers and eaters. I am growing diversified vegetables on land that's been in our family for 150 years. And so with the pandemic, gentrification, property values going up, we had to sell the land and we lost it. Join us as we uncover the untold stories behind this massive piece of legislation that shapes how we grow our food, what we eat, and so much more. The problems we have had, those are things that come from earlier Farm Bill and USDA policy, right? Like Earl Butts, get big or get out. You know, it's my responsibility to know not only what I'm eating, but then like how, how that all came to be and realize like, wow, like this piece of legislation, all this money, like it's technically something that I support as a taxpayer. While Congress debates the next Farm Bill, this is not just an invitation to listen. It's a call to action. Be part of the conversation. Subscribe to the Farm Report on Heritage Radio Network wherever you listen to podcasts. You're listening to Heritage Radio Network. Since 2009, HRN podcasts have been exploring the wide world of food, beverage, and agriculture. Learn more at heritageradionetwork.org. This episode is brought to you by Visit Ithaca, home of New York's craft cider. I love New York. Plan your getaway at visitithaca.com. We talk about food. We talk about music with musical dudes. Finger on the pulse, snacky tunes. Hello and welcome to Snacky Tunes. I am one half your host, Darren Bresnitz. I am so excited to be sitting down with the host, co-creators, co-producers, of Big Appetite, premiering on Tastemade August 2nd. Check your local listings wherever Tastemade is available. I was lucky enough to be a part of the team to bring the show to life and to be on the road with these guys, along with our great crew, Mary, Chris, Tiffany, Kelly, everyone who helped bring this thing together. It's one of the best shows I've ever been a part of, and we chat with Ben and Jan and Miles. Also, Family Style Fest, which is coming to L.A. October 9th, We talk about the origins of the show, the intersection of food and design, how we picked our restaurants, and what we got to eat while we were on the road. It's such a fun conversation and very, very, very special to me. Then we go deep. I'm talking deep into the archives to hear one of our favorite performances, perfect for the summertime, from Harmar Superstar. It's perfect for you to put you in the right electric mood. So please... Sit back, relax, and enjoy Snacky Tunes here on Heritage Radio Network. Put me to the test, girl. I'm under arrest. No, we won't sleep Till the streets are clean And the levee broke now We got fire before smoke somehow The results are in Negatives are positive Cause I'm a prisoner of love up now You'll take me back in your arms Yes Put me behind bars No more living large, girl We're flirting with danger Dancing with strangers Now it's just you and me, girl 
inmate number 715203. Yeah, you will be my captor. Sunshine, my big time, my laughter. Cause I'm a prisoner of love. Whoa, whoa. When it rains, it pours. Oh, when I'm jumping up now. You'll take me back in your arms. Prisoner, yeah, I'm a prisoner of love. It's raining, it's pouring so hard. Yeah, we're not coming out now. No. Talk ain't always cheap now. I made a promise that I'm gonna keep somehow. Show you what I'm made of. A little prisoner, no prisoner, yeah, prisoner. Prisoner of love, whoa, whoa. When it rains, it pours. Yeah, when I'm toughing up now, won't you take me back in your Ben, Miles, Jan, welcome to Snacky Tunes. Thank you so much for taking time. I know we're just, well, this will run on Sunday, but we are officially one week out from the launch of your first show, Big Appetite, on Taste Made, August 2nd. How do you guys feel about everything? What's up, Darren? Thanks for having us. Uh, I, f- I feel great. I feel, I-, I think it looks amazing so far. So we're, we're, we're excited. I'm excited. Yeah, I, I- I totally am excited too. It's a trip that we're a week out. This is a project, you know, we started earlier in the year and to finally see it, uh, we're, we're here at the finish line. It's, uh, I'm, I'm proud of, I'm proud of my, myself. I'm proud of my team. Um, I'm proud of, to be working with, with the, I was proud to be working with you and working with taste made. Like I'm, I'm excited for this thing to come out. So it's amazing. It's, uh, it's so great. And, you know, I feel like the 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 idea or the 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 show's impetus really started a couple of years back. You know, Ben, we had you on for the first Family Style Fest, and you guys really coalesced this idea of food, culture, and design. How have you seen that evolve since the launch of the festival a few years ago? I mean, I think the biggest thing um, is that now restaurants are including merch and some kind of merch program into their business. And I, you know, like a, a, a great example of that is this just this past weekend, I was in Brooklyn and I was sitting down eating at Bonnie's and Calvin, who's the chef owner walked up, said, hi, he was wearing a Bonnie's hat. And as he walked away, me and my friends were sitting down eating at eating with, like we all looked at each other and we're like, I want that hat. And we all left the restaurant buying that hat. Um, and I, I believe that, you know, I, I was saying this years ago and I continue to preach it that restaurant merch is the new band merch um, and people want to be wearing their favorite restaurant merch. Um, and I think that it can be, a, you know, it's not it, it's a supplement to food sales. You know, it's just it's just an add on. And I think it's something really simple um, that restaurants can be doing, should be doing. And, you know, if you have a following. Um, and you put out some quality design product, like people are going to buy it and they want to, they want to support your restaurant and like, it's the best marketing for a restaurant as well. So I, uh, I, I see more and more of that. Uh, I have seen more and more of that over the last few years. Um, and I'm not going to sit here and say like, I'm the one or, you know, family style is the reason for that, but I hope that we are a, uh, a factor in that. There yeah, was definitely- yeah. I, I agree. Like, I think that in the in the past few years, you know, uh, you know, we, we, we definitely didn't start this. You know, restaurants have been have been making merch for, for some time. And, 
and people have been doing collabs. But I think that, you know, what, what Family Style has been able to do is, is you know, I, I guess sort of elevate it or, or make it more fun. Like, I think that we we just, you know, open the, the floodgates to, to, you know, people looking at their business, restaurants looking at their business a little differently. Like, I, I also have been seeing, you know, there's so much amazing creativity um, uh, in the culinary space right now. And, and, and from the beginning, it's, it, it, it's very reminiscent of early streetwear. It's like really independent and really pop up and, and I mean, I can do this and there's no, there's no boundaries. There's no walls between what genre I'm in. Um, and, and, and as a result of that, you see amazing product being dropped, you see books and, and really good design and, and, and pop, you know, like, it's just, it's just really fun since, since we've, we've emerged. And, and so I, I, I'd like to think that we, we play a big role in that, but you know, it's just the, the times that we're in are, are really just out of the box right now. And, and so it's fun. It's fun to participate in. Yeah, I mean, I think you guys had the festival and then we had the pandemic and the merch was such a big lifeline um, and a way for people to support and connect with restaurants that it, it's taken on even more importance in the last few years. Yeah, yeah absolutely. It, it, it's it's not, you know, like like it, ultimately it, it it like Ben and I go back and forth about this a lot, like like are are these restaurants going to make a ton of money on the merch that we drop like no no but but maybe and and also it's just it's just a it's it's a way for other people to experience this this brand you know like a restaurant as a brand as a you know a brand that has really good food but then also really cool hats you know like like Uncle Paulie's and 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 you know Bonnie's and and uh, restaurants like that so so like it it, it can be absolutely um, at the end of the day, you know, it, it, it all is about the food and, and, and how, you know, what, 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 how you can get to people's taste buds. But, but it, I, I think so. I think, I think, you know, you're onto something there. It's also like a cool indicator on finding like-minded people, like the same way that when you were, you know, growing up and you saw somebody wearing a band t-shirt that you liked or like a skate t-shirt that you liked, like somebody got it, you know, and you knew that. And when you see somebody wearing a piece of merch from a restaurant that you know and love, you're like, oh, you like, I get you. I know where you're coming from. And I'm probably going to have a, a good conversation with you, which is for me pretty rare to find now with like identifying people's styles and stuff like that. A hundred percent. I agree with Jan. Like if I'm walking down the street and I'm wearing a courage bagels hat, someone's going to stop me and say something about it. Or if I'm wearing a John and Vinny's t-shirt, someone's going to stop and say something to me about it. Whether I'm in LA, whether I'm in New York, whether I'm traveling anywhere. Uh, I absolutely agree with Jan that, you know, it's a very, it, it reminds me of early streetwear and early the hundreds when, you know, the first few years, if you saw someone wearing a hundreds t-shirt, it's like they knew, you know? And so you could, you know, that you could have that conversation with them and you could chat with them and like, they're like-minded. So I, I totally agree with Jan. I, I absolutely agree. If I see someone wearing a certain restaurant hat or shirt, I'm like, all right, I know, I know we can, we can chat. Um, so it's one thing to have the festival. It's it's one thing to be pl- to be in this world of food and design. It's it's a whole other thing to start to turn it into a TV show. When did the idea start to come between you guys that this could be and I, something that could be on the air, something that could coalesce in, into a series? Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, okay, I can talk on that. Like it's when when, when family style when we, when we started family style. Um, like I, I always envisioned it to be more than a festival, you know, like we had, we had a very, you know, the goal was straightforward. We, we need to produce like a really fun party. Like, like that, that's what it was. But, uh, after we, we, we did the first one, uh, like it, it was such a, an amazing turnout. I mean, like the, you know, what, what, uh, you know, we were able to pull the, pull off and Ben and Bobby and, and, and the whole team, like, at first at bat, you know, it was, it was incredible. And, and that's when I thought like, really like, oh, this ca- actually might, w- like, we can do this. You know, there, there is a, there is a, a groundwork that's been laid where, where, you know, uh, a lot, a lot of people from different walks of life, uh, you know, it, food is a little bit less niche than, you know, a street where like food is more universal. Like, I think we can do this. And, and, you know, a TV show has always just been a, a huge goal, 
Um, like I, just from growing up watching food shows and, you know, B- Bourdain and even Andrew Zimmern with, with my dad, like, you know, like the, the, the old like food shows have always been uh, a driving force in entertainment for me, you know, personally. Um, and then, you know, what we in, in the beginning of the festival, we did these like restaurant highlights where we had Ben go and yeah. And like Ben would do these interviews um, and I, I guess Ben can speak on this too, but like, you know, before Bobby, Bobby did a lot of the, Bobby was the face of the hundreds and, and Ben did a lot more of the business stuff on, on the back end. but with family style, you know, this really is like, you know, Ben's the, the, the face of this. And, and so it was an interesting dynamic of like, all right, Ben, like, can you go on camera and do this? And, and there was like a little hesitancy, but he was down and he kind of killed it. Like he was, he's just, re- he was like really good on camera, like from the beginning and this was just like in the middle of his day like we'd be like all right like ben has hundreds of meetings and this and that and then at 1 p.m can you go to to bert back like do an interview with bert and then you come back to that it's like it was just like in the middle of his day but he was able to to like to turn it on really quickly and and he was good and and i felt very compelling and then and then it just kind of just started building from there of like oh we have this cool brand like ben is ben is kind of like you know i think he's really good at this um, and then, and then it, and then from there, it was just like, how, how do we do this? And, you know, obviously continuing to grow family style led to that, but, but that was, it was, it was always kind of early on, like family style sh- is going to be more than a festival. You know, how it got here was, was a, was a whole nother, another story. Yeah. I mean, what did you ultimately want the show to represent? Because there's a lot of travelogues out there. There's a lot of people who go around and eating what story did you want to tell from this show that you didn't feel that was out there already? Well, I mean, that was always my, my that's what I, I challenged Miles with when he came to me with this idea of the show. And I was like, look, I'm down, but I was, how are we going to make it different? And, you know, we, we went through a few iterations, you know, we worked with you on it also to try to nail down what we wanted. And it ultimately came down to you know, there's not a show out there that really gets behind, you know, the design, the food, the story, and and how all of those tie together and give you a restaurant. And um, when when we started, and this was the idea. I mean, I, I still think it's a great idea. I think that you know, not every not every restaurant does it. But the ones that do and do it well, it's they're really special, and they you know they they really do tell a story, and I think that's really important in restaurants, especially post pandemic. I think people do want a story, they do want an experience, and they're looking for more than just you know good quality food. Like I, I think good quality food and good tasting food is expected, but what more can you offer? Uh, uh, a restaurant, someone that's coming to eat at your restaurant. And so, you know, the, the, the places we shot at really do tell a good story. They have a good concept behind them and they do a great job of tying together their, their, the, the story and the inspiration behind a restaurant um, mm-hmm. with their food and put in front of you this, you know, great experience of a restaurant. Yeah, and, and I think if, if the question is, is, is what, what do we want the show to to represent, it, you know, like like to add on to what Ben is saying, ultimately we want the show to represent the, the people behind the restaurant, you know, like those stories and, and, and uh, highlight their, their journey and their vision. Um, so it's not just about the recipe. It's not just about how to make this, you know, dish. It's, it's, it's really about them. We want it to represent them. I think when we were putting the criteria for restaurants that we were going to feature, you know, you're, you're like, Oh, I know a great place with great food and I know a place with great design, but finding restaurants and, and, you know, I know people who are behind great food or great design, but finding those places that represented sort of all three was much tougher than, than we originally thought. I thought it was very difficult. Uh, Like, you know, I, I shot down how many restaurants, right? Like I, I think I, I really believe that there, that is a a hard thing to pull off and the ones that pull it off really do a good job because there are a ton of restaurants that give you great food, 
There are a ton of restaurants that might give you great design, but there are not as many restaurants that give you great design, great build out, great food, great energy, and then tie literally everything all together and give you this great concept. Yeah. And and we'd be remiss to not also shout out Mary Agnes, yeah. uh, the director who, yeah. who also kept pushing for the best story, the best food, the best location and challenging yeah. what makes a good package Mary and what the, makes a good location. Mary, the real boss of this project. The real <laughs> boss of this project. But it, it, it's interesting because you walk into a lot of places that are maybe now designed for Instagram in one way or another. And then you get in there and you're like, this isn't hitting the way that I needed to. No. And I, I just ate at a place like that last week here in LA that I thought, that I, I, I thought looked cool. And, you know, I thought maybe the food would be good. And I went there and like the place was, it was made for Instagram. It was just really pretty. And it'd be fun if like, if like a group of girls was going there to take photos and maybe the food is just good enough. Like, and like the, you know, the, the maitre d' asked me what, what I thought. And I don't think he was expecting to hear the answer I gave him because I was very honest with him. Well, <laughs> let's just say that you were very positive and very happy with all the 15 spots we swung by for season one. So oh, absolutely. Every, everywhere we <laughs> shot out in season, everywhere that we shot at in season one, I would eat at again. And I, I'll recommend like there's all of them are great. And I'm very proud of all the restaurants and all the people we worked with in season one of Big Appetite. Yeah. And, and, and just, just to stay on this subject a, a, a little more, like, like we, we family style is, is, is known for curating uh, our lineups and, you know, Ben does an incredible job with that and, and the team does, uh, but this was very different. You know, this is very different. There were so many, there, there, there was, it, it was a very specific criteria. And, and so, so, you know, it, we, it, we just have to, really shout out the, the team that that was involved and, and Darren you were heavily involved as as an EP, you know as the EP on the show but but also just kind of generally like interested in in what we we're trying to build like like all of us kind of got together Jan you know did an incredible job producing uh Kelly Wong from our team as well like Chris Alvin, Lowe shooting the hell out of that show I man, love that. Dude. I, I love Chris, man. He was—he yeah. really is a special guy. Yeah, yeah. We were, we're, we're rules. yesterday, and and literally yesterday, Ben. Last night, Ian and I were in the office, and and we were just watching the show, and like, and we were comparing it with other food shows, just because, like, you know, it it comes out next week, so like, we're we're in our heads about this all the time, and it just looks really, really good. Like, it looks amazing. So, yeah, so it looks really good. Yeah, shout out to the whole team. Like, like seriously, like it's a great curation. Uh, uh, yeah, the restaurants came about that way. Amazing. Well, listen, yeah. let's take a quick break and we come back. I want to talk about some of the people that we met on the road, some of the restaurants that we we featured and uh, what viewers can expect from the show. We have a song from the archives here on Heritage Radio Network. Anything to try 
But you always want what you cannot have. You push me away just to beg for me back. No, 'cause you always want what you cannot have. You push me away just to beg for me back. And darling, I. Hello and welcome back to Snacky Tunes. We are here with Ben, Miles, and Jan of Big Appetite coming out August 2nd on Taste Made. And in season one, we met a lot of great people and we went to a lot of great restaurants. And while we did our research, sometimes you don't really understand a restaurant or understand how special something is until you until you walk through the doors. What were some of the biggest surprises from the stories, the most exciting moments Uh, at the places you ate in season one? Um, a few of them. I mean, I, aunts and uncles in, in Brooklyn, I was, I was blown away by, I like their, what they do there, I think is so special. Um, like there, it's a great community neighborhood restaurant. The concept behind it is great great job designing it, what they're, what they're serving, why they're serving, like the, like everything ties together so well. Um, you know, it's an, it's a vegan restaurant, uh, plant-based restaurant. And you know, I'm not, there's, I'm not shy about it. Like I don't, I don't prefer to eat like that. And most of the time I think that it's, it's not great food, but the food was absolutely delicious. The people behind it were delicious. They're all there. Their concept behind it, I thought, was so thoughtful. Um, and the way they put everything together and why that restaurant exists. I just I think it's a really important restaurant uh, for in Flatbush. And mm-hmm. um, it's great for the neighborhood. And it's yeah, I was I was really, really impressed with um, with aunts and uncles. Um, another one that I was really surprised by was Wusong Road. So uh, good. In, in Boston. Like, I was going to bring them up, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like they're, I, I mean, they're great. Um, what they do is great. How they do it is great. The build out behind that place is so cool. That tiki bar upstairs is so cool. All those tiki cups. That Peking duck is great. Like, like at his whole story, his family it, restaurant, like all, all of unreal. that. It's like, unreal. Yeah, it really I, – I was – I was very pleasantly surprised by by that place, um, and it's I still think about that Peking duck. I still yeah. think about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I totally would. I would love to eat there again. Um, and then if I had to pick a third one that I was very pleasantly surprised by was uh, was Chifa. Um, wow, nice. I didn't. I didn't know what to expect from Chifa. Um, I, I didn't know what I was walking into. I just. I knew that. It was Umberto's family restaurant, but I didn't I didn't know much else about it. Um, and they really did a great job building that place out. Um, you know, there I, there was so much thought behind it. Uh, I thought it was so cool. And then just talking to his mom and his family and how it's, it really is a family ran business. And the food they're serving, I think, is is really is top quality. It's so thoughtful, like, and and everything behind it. Um, I, I'm I'm a fan of Chifa too. So like, I'm those are those are three surprises for me. Chifa is really um, the perfect example of what this show is all about. Where yeah. it's thoughtful food. It it wound up being a lot of family stories, which I think surprised me of how many of these were generational stories reinterpreted in a in a new type of restaurant um and just people who were who just thought about every detail thought about everything the experience the beginning to end it's tough not to to leave at least watching the episodes and especially because we got to meet so many people but leaving the show inspired what inspired all of you about um the people you met and and the design you saw and the food you had Oh man, that's a hard that, that's that's a hard one because like 
everybody brought so much of themselves to the table. And I know that's like a pretty generic kind of corny answer for it, but sitting down with people and hearing the story of how they got to where they are and why what they're doing is important and realizing that you know that people are always doing what they love, but to see them be able to articulate that in a way that they don't usually get the platform to do was something that was really cool for me to see about this show, you know, because lots of times when people come in to talk about a restaurant, they just talk about how good the food is and all of that. And you don't really get the story behind all of it. And especially like aunts and uncles or something like that, like Ben brought them up earlier, the, they have a great little reminder on the menu. And even when we were between takes setting stuff up, we were hanging out in the front of the shop and like, everybody that was walking by was saying what's up to, to them. It just felt like a cornerstone of the neighborhood. And so much of that was felt through all of the other restaurants that we went to. And that was just cool for me to see. Yeah. I, I, I agree with you I, I think that what, it, it, what was inspiring um, were, were these stories and, and, you know, we, we just had this unique opportunity to, to travel, you know, across the country and, and visit small businesses. And, and, and I think that's, that's what's special is like, you know, for example, in our Boston episode, we went to Bronwyn, um, who he's an incredible chef. And, and, you know, th- this, this entire restaurant was, was uh, essentially a love letter to his wife and, and, you know, made from his hands, you know, he built that insane door and he built that bar that Ben and Johnny and, and Nina were sitting on. And, 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 you know, so it, it was, like, like that, that I felt I left feeling like, wow, like you can really put your all, you can really put your heart into what you do. Um, you know, like, it, like it, it, it's not, it doesn't have to just be work, you know, like, like, like there, there can be passion and love behind it. Um, and so, so yeah, yeah, I, I agree with you on, and that one specifically stood out as, as like a, a moment that was really, really cool to watch and, and hear and hear about. Shout out to Bronwyn's mustard because that was spicy. That was, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, there's been a lot of talk about the current dining scene, um, its ups and its downs and things like that. What did you, what did you think about, because this show went across America, about the current dining scene, the current state of it, sort of through the lens of this show? Well, I think coming out of the pandemic that people are looking for an experience and want to be told a story and they're looking for when they're going to a restaurant to really it's like a night out for them for it to be part of a night out for them. And, you know, I'm starting to see more and more restaurants are Mm. building out like a, you know, they're putting more thought behind the build out of their restaurant and maybe they're putting better speakers in. So the music sounds better or they're putting in uh, like a little bit nicer tables and chairs or nicer, like uh, uh, plateware and, 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 you know, silverware. And, you know, maybe they're putting more thought behind, like even something as small as like the napkins or making matches, like just small things that really, when you put it all together, all add up and can really make the difference in the experience of a restaurant. And I'm, I'm starting to see it a little bit more and more. And I think that our show is a, does a great example of sh- showcasing that um, and how restaurants really are. It's not just like come sit down, eat and leave. Like, no, like this is an experience. There's a concept here. There's a reason why, you know, the, the restaurant are these colors or the art is here or why the tables are like this or, you know, why the chandeliers are like this. And, and you know, I'm, I'm proud to be the one that gets to talk to a lot of these restaurants and bring that to bring that to an audience that might not even think to look up or look at the lights or look at the uh, look, look at the table yeah. or look, look yeah. at the plates and, you know, and or think about like why, you know, this chef is cooking, cooking this dish or where the inspiration came from this dish, you know. Um, and so I'm, I I think that people are looking uh, more and more towards that. Yeah. Yeah. And is that is that what you want viewers to take away from this show being 
just showing them like there is so much thought and detail that goes into a whole experience from the people who are actively putting these types of restaurants out into the world. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's that was the number one goal yeah. was to show people like it's more than just cooking food, which in itself is really fucking hard to do. Yes. Right? Like, yes. Putting out, putting out great food and food that people are going to want to continue to come back and eat is very difficult on its own. But then to add on top of that, you know, the how, the why, mm-hmm. the, you know, and building a restaurant and building a brand and building mm-hmm. a build out like a, a you know, the designing a, a restaurant that really speaks to people that that's like another layer that's even just so much harder. So you know, yeah. I, I really tip my cap to a lot of the restaurants that out there doing it and especially to the ones we covered on our show. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I think that that is the takeaway that that we want out of it. You know, like like if, if we're able to paint a restaurant in a different light as as an overall establishment, as, as an overall brand, like like some of the reasons why I have such uh, me personally, I have an affinity with with brands that I'm just fans of is because I, I, I know a bit more about them. You know, even the hundreds, you know, like why people love the hundreds so much is, is because they're so the doors are so open uh, into Ben's story and Bobby's story. And 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 I think that the more you peel back the curtains, um, the 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 more you're able to connect with your customers on on a on a personal level. I think that ultimately, it, you know, it adds longevity to, to, to what uh, what uh, restaurants are doing. Um, and, and I think that that kind of is, is where the, the current state of, uh, of the industry is right now too. There's, there's, you know, like to touch on what Ben was saying, there's, there's so many options, but, but it, it is really cool to see, um, you know, restaurants place an emphasis on, uh, other aspects outside of getting the food perfect, which, which of course, again, is still the, the number one part of, of, of it. It's still, it's still the thing that will, ultimately make or break uh, a restaurant but but you know seeing the emphasis on on other aspects of the business is is really cool to watch and and we hope that this show um you know people pay more attention to things like that because they're so because because when you do you, you're gonna be treated to a, a, an amazing story i love it now look i would be remiss if it didn't have the three of you here because you recently announced october 9th family style fest the third iteration any yeah. teases? What can people expect? What you know? Obviously, I don't think we're gonna get any exclusives, but what can people look forward to for the festival this year? October 9th, baby. We're yeah, back. <laughs> we're back. I mean, honestly, Darren, like our goal with the festival is always to be better than the last one, and you know, I think the we were bringing restaurants that. Um, some people are going to be really excited about and don't really do food festivals the same way it was the past two years. Um, we're working with, um, you know, some great designers and artists. I think the experience like miles and yawn and the, and the team are just that much better this year than last year at, at creating an experience here at the festival. And, you know, I really believe that family style food festival is one of the best days of the year. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you're in Los Angeles that day, you're you should consider yourself lucky because it, it's really a special day and you should be coming to family style. Like it's a lot of fun. Um, there's great food. It's great music. Um, it's a good day for you. If you have young kids, you bring your kids out to it. Uh, you're going to see a lot of cool people hanging out. You're going to you're going to learn about a different restaurant. You're going to maybe buy some merch from your favorite brand or your favorite restaurant. Um, and you're going to hang out with friends and it's really a, a, it's really, really a great day. Like there's, there's fun. Yeah. It really is so much fun. Like last year was, was so good. Like, 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 you know, like, yeah, Ben puts that pressure on us, but, but I feel like we, we, we're up to, we're up to it. You know, last year was so good and, and, and yeah, like that's our goal. Like each one without dropping, I mean, we're going to be, we're going to be doing the lineup announcement very soon. Um, but without dropping names, like, like it's, it's, you know, we, we, I'm always surprised that at who Ben is able to, 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 you know, get, do the show. And, and, and it's, it's, you know, I, I love putting out the lineup because, because it's, it's a special moment. Um, but, but the, like, like, yeah, more than anything, like people have such a good time. Like, like, I, I can't tell you, I'm not even lying. Like people will like I, come up to me on the street, random people and just say that, 
you know, family style is the best day that they've ever had. Like, like uh, any festival, any whatever, like it. And that's such, that's such a good compliment because we're, it's a small, you know, for in the scheme of things in in this space, in the experiential space, we're, we're a smaller event. Um, but, but I think we, but we place such a big emphasis, uh, on the experience. And, and I, 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 I have to, you know, shout out the team again for that because we're, we're a small team, but, but Jan as a producer on, on, on everything does such an incredible job with, with rounding up, you know, what activations we need to. And, and Kelly also on our team had, you know, does such a good job communicating with everyone. Like it, it, it's a, it's a team effort. It's a, it's a small team, but we're able, you know, we're, we're excited that we, we deliver a, a very fun day for, for the city. Amazing. Well, listen, guys, congratulations. I know the show is awesome. It is a very different type of travelogue, very stylized, very cool. And honestly, it's just a great eating guide to to when you're in the city. This is a couple of – I don't want to just spoil everything because I want people to tune in, but there's fun little Easter eggs and little moments. Um, so thank you guys for, for making a great show. It was so much fun to work with you. And uh, for everyone who's listening, August 2nd, Taste Made, tune in. It's going to be a great time. Thank you, Darren. Uh, We have a song from the archives and then a live musical performance here on Snacky Tunes on Heritage Radio Network. I'm Katie Mosman-Wadler, Executive Director of HRN. HRN is dedicated to amplifying voices from all across our food system. Today, I'm asking listeners to take part in our summer membership drive by helping sustain our mission to expand the way eaters think about food. As a thank you for this tax-deductible donation, you can receive some great HRN swag, including the HRN cap, wine carrier, or a special spice set from Burlap and Barrel. 
By becoming a member, you will play an essential role in keeping nonprofit food radio on the air. Go to heritageradionetwork.org slash donate to become a member today. Thank you for your support. This episode is brought to you by Visit Ithaca, helping you to plan your next getaway. Ithaca has waterfalls and wineries, art and theater, outdoor recreation, and family fun. The area is famous for its glacier-carved gorges, co-op-run businesses, and cultural influences from Cornell University and Ithaca College. Plus, you can't beat the beauty of Cayuga Lake, the largest of the Finger Lakes. Beyond 150 waterfalls and some of the region's best hiking trails, Ithaca is cider. The area is well known for its local cideries, which are leading the way in America's cider revival. You can hear from the region's cider makers directly on HRN series Hardcore. There's something really special about Ithaca's climate for cultivating delicious apples steeped in history and terroir. Let Visit Ithaca help you plan your next trip to this hub of food, drink, culture, and agritourism. Home of New York's craft cider, I love New York. Get started at visitithaca.com. Hi, Mar Superstar. Welcome to Snacky Tunes. Thanks, man. Uh, really happy that you're here. Really been uh, great seeing your face around town. Yeah, I'm a real local now. Yeah, you're like a real local. <laughs> yeah, like, it's not like oh, hey, man, what's up? I was a fake local for years not living here, but everyone thought I lived here, so it was kind of a secret of mine that I was secretly in L.A. just laying on my couch watching TV <laughs> um, while everybody was talking about me. Li- I'm just kidding. Yeah, but um, <laughs> I mean, let's I mean, because we we so I so really get this. What uh what made the move uh, a reality? What um, made you become a perma local? Well, to be completely frankly honest, I walked away from my house that I owned and I just stopped paying and I left and I was like it's time to change, I'm going to New York. The, the American dream. Yeah. I'm living the just, American dream. Just leave it all behind. Yeah. Did you even lock the door to when the you new left? New country. Uh, I did cuz I was going to squat there for a while cuz I thought that would be a, a hilarious option, a chapter in my life that would be Good to this is about. the other side of when you live on your passion, you just got to walk away from some things <laughs> sometime. Uh, but I was kind of like feeling creatively stagnant in L.A. after a while. Just uh, just the, the good weather constantly kind of actually grates on you after a while. For me, I like seasons, you know what I mean? So. I, would, I would say that the um, most productive time is like when it's winter. Yeah. Know, when know. you're hunkered down. I mean, I'll write like could... three albums in the winter and like three scripts and then like live off of that for the, you know what I mean? Like yeah. just get it done and like cave out and have a good time. I mean, I have friends that have left LA and moved here and then they'll go out to LA in like December for work and they'll be like, I got nothing done. Like it was just nice enough that I just went out yeah, all totally. the time. No, that's kind of how I felt, you know, and you're kind of just waiting for people to get off work at that point. When you're not working, it's, it's kind of maddening. You know? Um, so you're out here. Yes. Which neighborhood did you just move to? I live in Williamsburg. Oh, welcome. Graham Stop. Oh, Graham Stop. Yeah. Oh, we're all kind of you know. right, in the, right in the hood. Um, and you just finished a record, right? Yeah, well, I'm just putting the finishing touches on it now. I just signed with uh, Cult Records, which is Julian Casablancas's new label. And uh, he's going to finish the record with me. We're just doing a little bit more production on it. But What's the uh, process going to be finishing it? How's, um, he, how's he stepping in? Um, well, he's got, you know, he's he's got amazing vocal sensibilities Mm -hmm. so for the most part we're going to go in and redo uh the main vocals just with some like little melody ideas little tweaks here Mm -hmm. and there and then edit the songs a little bit and maybe do another one or two but yeah and how did you record the record this time around i went to austin texas and i recorded with uh jim eno from spoon the drummer um at his place it's a great studio there I mean, you've been at this for a very long time. Yeah. And it's been amazing. I mean, I was saying, like, Power Lunch was, like, when I was, like, 10 years ago. Yeah, and that's, uh, like, my third band that I toured. You know what I mean? Yeah, Armar's, like, my third. Shout out the first two. Well, there's a band called reference. Calvin Crime that was on AMREP when I was, like, 16 or 17. Okay. And we toured a lot. And then I was uh, I have a band called Sean Nana that I kind of periodically still do. I feel like that's still, like, that's always, like, right... Right on the edge. Yeah. Like, like it comes back in, cuts yeah. across Harmar, and like kind of goes out of focus, yeah. and then it's weaves fun. back in. It's be like, you know, whatever I feel like. But um, Harmar is 
by and far the you know most prominent. He's my breadwinner. <laughs> he brings home the bacon. Oh, Mark, come on, get out there, go earn, go earn a little for daddy. <laughs> go take your pants off at a nightclub. Yeah, exactly. People people love it. Um, but, well, let's let's get a song. Okay, let's let's get a little reference. Right, uh, you want to hear a new one? Yeah, yeah, let's hear a new one. All right, this one's called Prisoner of Love. Live on Snacky Tunes. To the test, girl. I'm under arrest. No, we won't sleep till the streets are clean and the levee broke. Now we got fire before smoke somehow. The results are in. Negatives are positive Cause I'm a prisoner of love When it rains it pours Oh, when I jump it up now You'll take me back in your arms Behind bars, no more living large, girl. We're flirting with danger, whoa. dancing with strangers. Now it's just you and me, girl. Inmate number 715203. Yeah, you will be my captain. Sunshine, my big time, my laughter. Cause I'm a prisoner of love. Whoa, whoa. When it rains, it pours. Oh, when I jump in up now, you'll take me back in your arms. Prisoner, yeah, I'm a prisoner of love. Yeah, we're not coming out now. No. Talk ain't always cheap now. I made a promise that I'm gonna keep somehow. Show you what I'm made of. A little prisoner, no prisoner, yeah, prisoner. Prisoner of love, whoa. up now Won't you take me back in your arms Prisoner of love Just a little prisoner of love oh. Oh. Yeah, Toughen up now Won't you take me back in your arms <laughs> Where did they come from? Oh, I see them. The Roberta staff. The Roberta staff. What's up, guys? Is that guys. MC Todd out there? Yeah. Yeah, it's all happening. MC Todd. Everyone's gathering. Check, check, check the internet for that new release on MC Todd. <laughs> Poly G, Poly G, I bet you didn't think I sounded like that. Yeah, what did you think? <laughs> <laughs> the word that came to mind is juxtaposition. I'm like, oh, I did not expect to hear yeah. that. Your eyes kind of lit up. I, I, I said, we can, we can have a two-hour discussion about music as soon as this is over. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's what I thought. Um, <laughs> so your vocals have been lent to other projects. Uh, I feel like very lucky I got to see you tour with gangs. Oh, yeah, man. Which was like That's so at fun. the uh, Natural History Museum in L.A. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about... Let's talk about that. I okay. love that record. Oh man, it's I mean, the best. it's it's. I mean, I put it on last night. Um, 
and was just like, fuck, this is one of the best records. It is love making music. It is love making music. Everything's 69 BPMs. Yeah. I mean, let's, I mean, just talk to me about that project because I've never got a chance to really sit down and. Um, do yeah. It. I mean, it's sort of like uh, the brainchild of Ryan Olson, who produced like the Polisa album and a bunch of other groups. Who are also in Minneapolis. Yeah. Incredible. Channy, the singer, is actually in gangs yeah. too. So, uh, he kind of put together the soft rock thing with a couple of the guys from Solid Gold in Minneapolis, and I think, and with the idea of getting Justin Vernon from Bon Iver involved, and sort of just became this behemoth, like, 25-member band. And it was really only supposed to be a project where they were going to put out the album, play one show with everybody there, and then break up. And it sort of took off so, so much that uh, a tour happened, and then more tours ha- like you know what I mean like we did yeah. the whole country I mean we never really went out overseas even though we're supposed to um, but that's just because of Ryan's like philosophies of like wanting to like take a cruise ship there you know what I mean right. like he like he made these ridiculous demands that were great but didn't happen yeah. <laughs> like, we'll, we'll buy you plane tickets cruise ship yeah nah, how about a cruise ship tugboat yeah, yeah. <laughs> we want to make this as weird and hard for you as possible um, but I mean, and what was touring like that? I mean, there really were like twenty five. Yeah. I mean, it was it was well, for the touring uh, band. It kind of was pared down to like ten or twelve people most of the time. But like, there's always like two bass players and like ninety guitar players and saxes going. I mean, it's a very sax heavy band. It's yeah. Very... And how do you feel like that fits into like the overall like Harmar story or like um, projects like that? It's cool. I mean, it was just like it was perfect timing for me because like I was in between records of my own. And it just sort of came up, and I recorded this George Michael cover with them. Then one more try, so like a bonus track that's out, and we did it even slower than the original, so it's like six minutes long or something. Um, um, for yeah. anyone that wants to also hear, uh, the NPR music app has like a live Gangs concert oh, so on yeah. it, and like that was like kind of like you know scroll back, scroll back, yeah, scroll back, <laughs> yeah, really, sweet. really amazing. <laughs> well, thanks. Uh, yeah. Um, so you moved here and you've started doing a podcast, yeah, which yeah. is which is really interesting um, because I think it's like such an easy way for to have an output without having to put out music. Yeah, but no, it's kind of curious. Yeah, like, it comes out every week. It's called Nocturnal Emotions. It's on Earwolf. Um, what is Earwolf? Earwolf is uh, Earwolf dot com is kind of like a they're like a podcast sort of label. You know, like they do um, comedy bang bang and. Uh, who charted and just so many shows. Is that like all puns? <laughs> no, no. Uh, but you know, it is a lot of comedy guys. Yeah. Like I think they're they're working on like maybe a Mister Show one or something. Like there's some some cool stuff in the works. Um, I don't know if I'm supposed to say that, but uh, I, I don't. You can know. always promise things, and, and you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, who's gonna check you? I, I can't. I, I can't even deliver this promise. Yeah. I'm, just, I'm just talking out my ass here. Obama's doing one. <laughs> yeah, we got you know, got some Royal Rumble. Hulk Hogan's in there. Yeah. Um, but no, yeah, it's it's really fun. Like you know, it's just uh, they're long conversations about embarrassing moments in like my guests' lives, and it's sort of like I run the gamut of guests of sort of anybody interesting, you know. Who've uh, past guests been? Um, I've had Macaulay Culkin, Ellen Page, Gavin McInnes, uh, John Daly is going to be on this week. Um, and I feature like some bands. I did like Minus the Bear and My Jerusalem last week. Interviews with them. Uh, you know, MNDR, uh, just uh, whoever, you know, whoever's to f- around to fill of. that downtime. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like fuck. I should start a podcast. Yeah, or I something. Know. But uh, like, really, it's not that much work. You talk to somebody for like forty-five minutes, tape it, and then make an intro and an outro each week. You know, it's like it's kind of about a few hours of work a week, and it's it's very rewarding. Do you have um, besides <clears throat> embarrassing stories? Like, is there you know something you try to convey from? You have a wide range of guests. You know, yeah. Is there something you tried, like, an overarching theme, or is it more just a conversation between two people? It's a conversation. I mean, it normally gets kind of weird, and, and you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's me, so it gets, like, a, a bit stony. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or something. Yeah. Like, we, we like to go on tangents and riff. and um, uh, No, but, like, it's, that's just sort of a jump-off point. But I like to kind of explore the darker sides of people's lives, too, because that's, like, you know what I mean? Like... That's the real stuff, and it's yeah. really interesting. And I don't know the whole the whole vibe of the thing is very nighttime. I mean, that's the thing that we were saying before. It's like, yeah, everyone can be like, yeah, we like put out our demo, and we got the record deal. It's like, yeah. you know, I just showed up to Hollywood, and I got my first gig. It's like, yeah, yeah what yeah. happened? It's like, well, there were two years of drug addiction, and yeah. uh, I slept in a van for three years yeah. and ate cornflakes without milk. Yeah, it's like, oh, 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 that was oh, that what you wanted? Oh, okay, that's the real thing. I mean, it's like we were saying before. It's to know those stories is you know to know that everyone goes through it and like. Kind of like even when you're going through the shit to know that other people are experiencing it, 
makes it easier. Yeah. Oh, totally. No, you want to share a low? A um, low? I'm trying to think. I mean, there, there's so many. I mean, I think like every three years, like the money just runs out. And that's like not even really a low. I mean, it's kind of like that's when I get motivated. I need it. I need to run out of my money so that I have like some sort of like like survivalist instinct to like output like a script or like an album. And that's like where the actual songs come from. You know what I mean? Because if I was just happy and content all the time, I don't think I'd feel driven to make anything. Do you want to play a song <laughs> that uh, came from a low? Uh, yeah. This one's real obvious. <laughs> this is another new one called Why, Why, Why. Let me... Uh... All right. You ready? Ready. Yeah. I missed another opportunity to see another day gone I'm another day older, earth beneath my feet only grows colder I need to take a trip to the Golden Gate Bridge Contemplate my life and the things I miss Let loose my feet as my feet slip away Well, dive shock before my legs break I don't deserve another breath in me, you see. I squandered things, the lessons of lovers. Somebody have some mercy, help me put myself under. I was learning to tie knots down a fisherman's wharf. When the boys got the call, they had to go to war. They left me hanging how to tie this noose. Oh, it's just a little too loose. Yeah, I cut myself. But I'd never bleed Just another failure got me in long sleep To hide the pain building up in me Another secret that I need to keep Yeah, yeah, yeah Wah, 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 wah Wah, 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 oh Wah, 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 oh, oh, oh I missed another opportunity to see another day gone. It's another day older. Wap, 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 is me. Yeah. Yeah. This one's about not being a crybaby. Polly, comments? <laughs> I, I'm just blown away. <laughs> well, uh, thanks, we have man. to get you on my playlist. Yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll bring in that. some stuff. I'll trade you for some pizza. There you go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there, there it is. That's how it goes. That's down. how you get out of the lows. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's the thing. Uh, speaking of food, do you uh, what's uh, what's on the diet these days? What do you what are you eating? Um, you know, what have you found in Williamsburg that is like? Shh, oh, you know? you know what the best is is Mesa Kaiwakan, that that Mexican place. It's really good. Like like super like LA level like Mexican food. You Where know? is it? Uh, it's right on Graham Avenue, like right in between Consolier and Skillman. Oh, that place. Yeah. Okay. So it's next to uh, like Sal de Mer. Sal de Mer, and that, that place pl- is great, too. That place is great. Yeah. Um, there's so much stuff over there. Uh, I don't know. I, I love eating at the Commodore, too. It's that the hot, uh, the hot breast and the nachos. Are I so mean, good. the Commodore, I mean, I think they're like one of the few restaurants that got like one, like bar food that got one star. That's so weird. Yeah, it's so good. Have you probably have you eaten there? The Commodore, I'm not, I'm the best fried there. chicken. It's, they it's know right, right here. Yeah, it's right across the street from Saint Assam. Um, and the nachos. The nachos are yeah. like they're like Austin, Texas, real queso nachos. I think that's like, what we ate on that night <laughs> out uh, before Fourth of July. We started with the nachos. Oh yeah, yeah, exactly. And we which did are that. just. Uh, Fantastic. They're so good. They're so good. So, so what's coming up next? So the record's going to finish. And yeah, then... well, that'll come out probably March. Uh, I don't know. I'm just writing some TV stuff right now and trying to get that going through by the time. What's the uh, TV stuff? I, I, I'm developing a show. I've been developing a show for HBO for like a few years um, that wasn't going to get shot, and now it might. I, everything's so weird. And the TV is slow. So, I mean, I mean like, whatever happens, slow. whatever we do, it'll come out in like two years. So. Not even worth really mentioning, but like <laughs> promises. Promises. Obama will have a guest paid a little bit, yeah, yeah. you know, it's here and there. Um, but yeah, no, just working on the podcast. Uh, I'll be playing shows. I'm gonna go to Fun 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 Fest like, in a couple there. weeks. Sweet. Yeah. 
Uh, Which it really is like one of the most fun, fun. Yeah, fun and the lineup's great. Run DMC is playing. I'm yeah. psyched about that. Japan Androids are playing. Japan Droids. This, this, this is just so good. There's so many. I mean, uh, I X is playing all of uh, Los Angeles, I think, or Wild Gift, one of the two. Oh, really? I love both of those. Albums. I mean, just you know, we were talking about it before. You're going to see Crosby, Stills, and Nash tonight, right? Yes, I am. What what album are they playing? The, their first album, their self titled album. I mean, it's just get the fans what they want. But you can play a few new ones. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I think, like, you know, yeah, do an encore and play, like, five more. But you do the album that people want to hear. Yeah. You know, and then, nice. then they can leave or the true fans can stay. <laughs> I will say this, though. I just saw the David Byrne St. Vincent, their new show. And they published oh. a new record. And it's incredible. I want to see. I mean, they're both so good. I There's, can only imagine it's, together. It's, it's so good. And the choreography. And, I mean, it's just really one of the best shows I've seen. And you're just like... And they weave in their old stuff with the new stuff. And oh, they, that's awesome. They do it really, they do it really well. I try, I try to do, like, you know... I try to mix it up, do two old ones and a new one. You know what I mean? Like I feel like throughout the show, keep, yeah, keep people like perked up from. But I mean, your music is also like really like I had never heard those two songs. Yeah, and, like they're also like upbeat songs or upbeat songs. Yeah, it's not like hey, here's a new one. It's super slow. It's six minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please not, don't go to the bar. I'm not pulling too many punches. Yeah. I mean, it's vibe wise, a little different, but it really does. Yeah, it fits in with the set really you know, well. So. You know what I love about that song? It, it sounds so upbeat. Yeah, it's yeah. So dumb. I that's my favorite. Like, I love like Gilbert O'Sullivan. Like, Alone Again Naturally is one of my favorite songs, and it's really poppy. But then you listen to the lyrics, and they're like the most. You're like, oh shit, down. This guy's <laughs> gonna jump off yeah. or something. You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> there, there's a great song by the Style Council. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, which uh, which one? Uh, I forget the name of the, the the title now. I can't believe it's not coming. Out. I just absolutely love it. But it was a very angry song, and it was just so happy. Yeah. Another great one is uh, Bluebird by oh. Leon Russell. Yeah. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. It's Harry, one of the Harry Nielsen. Songs Harry you've Nielsen ever heard. does that a lot too. Like he's he's kind of the master of that stuff. Those are guys are my those are my dudes. <laughs> um, well, I want to get one more song in, but um, want to give people the nuts and bolts of where to find you, where to get the podcast. Oh yeah, um, you can just go to earwolf dot com and look for Nocturnal Emotions with Harmar Superstar, or go to iTunes uh, Music, or go to podcasts and iTunes, and then look under the music category, and it should be there. Uh, you can just look it up on iTunes, I guess too. Um, so yeah, you can subscribe; it's free. Get it every week. Website, Twitter. Awesome. Uh, yep. Yeah. Or just follow me at Harmar Superstar, you know, and that and sort of thing. I, I update every week on Twitter where where to find it, too. And uh, almost every day on Instagram as well. Oh, yeah. And I, <laughs> and I, and I can't say get the gang's record. Get oh, a, yeah. Get a Harmar record. Get it, yeah. And get a gang's record. Yeah, definitely. Find a loved one. We're working on some sort of like other s- projects, spin off things right now that are, yeah. that are happening. So I would say cool. research the gang's record because like Pulika's on there isn't like. Um, what other uh, marijuana? guys from Marijuana Death De- Squads, Megaphone, uh, Bony Fair, a lot of that band. Um, there's so many people have played in it. Um, you the could, Rosebuds. I mean, there's just like it's just people from all over the country. You could really get like a good starting point. Um, <laughs> anyway, well, thanks for being on. Oh yeah, man, Polly, thank you as always. Yeah, Paul, great pleasure. Uh, and um, are you gonna take us up with one more track? Yeah, I'll do. Uh, I'm gonna do Tall Boy. Uh, the s- single off my last album. I'm on fire, baby. There's no place to go. So shed your clothes. We'll stop, drop, and roll. I need a toe, boy. Crack it open with me. Don't be shaking. Come on, let out the steam. Where's my tall boy? Satisfy my needs. Feel like drinking. Come on, get inside me. Me and my girls will roll up. You know you wanna check us out. Beats in the backseat blow up. Turn the whole scene. Still talk shit about Monday. The weekend is over now. Not meeting no one halfway. Amateurs get the hell. I don't see no ashtray, so I'm gonna use the ground. Ladies, last call for hairspray. Back door is open. You all know the party's jumping. Everything is going for free. Gonna grab a piece of something. Take it home. I need a tall boy. Where's my tall boy? Don't think I'm falling in love now. This is nothing but pure lust. Wanna use you up and get out like the kids? I come up, puppy eyes are broken. I'm not trying to be mean. Queen of the party, spoken. Jump on the floor with me. Yeah, the DJ is killing my groove. 
just got the text you sent me. Time to make up, making the trip back to my house. Spread it through the VIP. All the pretty people line up the couch till we get brought. I need a tall boy. Where's my tall boy? We'll stop, drop, and roll. I need a tall boy. So crack it open with me, don't be shaking. Come on, let out the steam. Where's my tall boy? Satisfy my needs, feel like freaking. So come on, get inside. I need a tall boy. So crack it open with me, don't be shaking. Come on, let out the steam. Where's my tall boy? Satisfy my needs, feel like drinking. Come on, get inside me. We talk about food. We talk about music with musical dudes. Finger on the pulse, snacky tunes. Snacky tunes is powered by Simplecast. Thanks for listening to Heritage Radio Network, food radio supported by you. Keep in touch at heritageradionetwork.org/slash subscribe.